Good morning, folks. We've got a stirring star. The sun is beginning to wake up for its 5.9 month peak coming later this month and next month. Still minor stretches and yawns, but awakening nonetheless. There have been several minor solar flares, most not producing CMEs. The filament eruptions have continued, even if not at the big earth-facing ropes. Instead, they've mostly been fired off the far side of the limbs and are set to miss Earth, as you can see here on Noah's Enlil Spiral for the latest CMEs. In terms of flaring, we are seeing it mostly impulsive. Three M-class flares in three days, with them coming from various points on our star. Their short-lived, impulsive nature keeps the bigger CMEs at bay for now. Those big central sunspots are joined now by some at the limbs. The big ones facing Earth are still split magnetically, but we are already seeing magnetic mixing at the southern incoming group, and it did fire one of the M-class flares. Eyes on all of them this week as the awakening continues. But right now, eyes on the animations from Goddard SVS for asteroid Bennu in the landing, sampling, and liftoff. Pretty cool look here at how they envision the agglomerated asteroid to be pretty crumbly in terms of its construction. Apparently, everything they've been waiting for, everything they've been building towards, amounts to about 30 seconds on the asteroid. Enough to disrupt, collect, and blast back off, hopefully to return the sample. They even have a solid ground change view from before and after, which helped them identify what marks they left on the asteroid versus what was already there. A hypothetical paper here about what would happen if you melted off the entire ice sheets from Antarctica and Greenland. Coastal areas could see a drop of over 100 meters due to isostatic readjustment. That's bad news for your beach house. And the central portions of Greenland and Antarctica, which no longer had the weight of the ice, could lift up nearly a kilometer. Needless to say, the paper was, again, hypothetical. But this isn't. We're watching the ionosphere excitement caused by the spate of smaller flares kicking up on our star. These are some of the events that subtly transfer through the waveguide around the planet at light speed, but in focus today, the upflow caused by these flares. The ionization and heating are the cause of the enhanced vertical flows, which is one of the ways the sun can metaphorically hit the gas pedal on the global electric circuit. The up and down flows between the ionospheric ceiling and the ground and which end up affecting clouds, lightning, humidity, wind, and surface temperatures. Last but not least, folks, we track the day-by-day -day data as it happened, but it takes a week or two to confirm and for the data to become official. So hearing it now for the second time for many of you, but now again, it is official, we have indeed broken the fastest day on record, breaking the 2020 marks and continuing to march towards the faster rotation, meaning the days grow shorter as expected with Earth's weakening magnetic field, as it lets more energy in, and as many of you expect for other reasons. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.